He was the most famous astronaut who ever lived for one very apparent reason, but there is more to admire about the first person on the moon than being the first person on the moon. Here are five awesome things about Neil Armstrong. Number one, he was the first person on the moon. Okay, it's not the only thing, but it still belongs on the list. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon aboard their lunar module Eagle while their crewmate Michael Collins piloted the command module Columbia in lunar orbit. Six hours later, Armstrong opened the lunar module hatch and descended a ladder to stand on one of the foot pads at the base of the limb. Then he set foot on the lunar soil and said, That's one small step for man. Later, when Aldrin had joined him outside, the two astronauts stood side by side as Armstrong read the inscription of a plaque that had been attached to the lunar module lander. Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. So that happened. That actually happened. But Neil Armstrong's resume is longer than one monumental achievement that will forever echo down the corridors of human history. For instance, did you know that, number two, he survived a brush with death while training for Apollo 11? A little over a year before Armstrong landed on the moon, he was here on Earth piloting an LLTV. That's a lunar lander training vehicle. The LLTVs were designed to simulate the feel of flying in lunar gravity to allow astronauts to practice piloting and landing the lunar module on the moon. During this particular exercise, the controls of Armstrong's LLTV failed and the vehicle began to bank. Armstrong ejected and parachuted to safety moments before the LLTV crashed and went up in a column of flames and black smoke. He was fine, but it was later determined that if he had ejected just half a second later than he did, his chute wouldn't have had time to open properly and he could have been badly injured or killed. Quite the close shave for the future first man on the moon. Armstrong's LLTV training came in handy though. During the landing of the Eagle, he had to assume manual control and fly to a new landing site after the LEM came in too fast and overshot the original target. You may be cool in a crisis, but I highly doubt you are, we missed our landing site on the moon, I'll just fly us to a new one, no big deal, cool. And as some of you probably guessed, I was about to say, that was not the first time astronaut Neil Armstrong had been frosty in the clutch. Number three, he kept his calm during an emergency on Gemini 8. Three years before landing on the moon, Neil Armstrong flew as the command pilot of Gemini 8. Alongside pilot Dave Scott, Armstrong's mission objectives included a series of docking maneuvers with the Agena target vehicle, a special uncrewed spacecraft NASA had designed to enable Gemini astronauts to practice orbital rendezvous and docking procedures in preparation for the upcoming Apollo project. Gemini 8's first attempt to dock with the Agena was successful, but then something went wrong. Gemini 8 and the Agena began to roll. Unable to stop and rapidly burning through their available fuel, Armstrong undocked from the Agena and realized that Gemini 8's own orbital control thrusters were malfunctioning to cause the rolling. Temporarily out of contact with mission control, Armstrong made the decision to shut down the orbital thrusters and activate the re-entry thrusters, which were a separate system intended for use only at the end of the mission when it was time to return to Earth. Armstrong regained control of the spacecraft, but he and Scott were forced to land only 10 hours into what had been planned as a three-day mission. It was the first time a critical system aboard a NASA spacecraft had failed in space, and were it not for the quick thinking of Neil Armstrong, he and Dave Scott might not have made it home. Gemini 8 proved that Neil Armstrong had the right stuff, but it also allowed him to accomplish something else. Because of Gemini 8, number four, he was NASA's first civilian astronaut. 
Like many of his fellow astronauts, including Alan Shepard and John Glenn, Neil Armstrong was a fully qualified naval aviator. He was decorated for his service during the Korean War and later worked as a test pilot. In 1960, he resigned from the Naval Reserves, and in 1962, he was chosen to be one of the New Nine, the second group of astronauts selected by NASA. When he flew on Gemini 8 four years later, he became the first civilian NASA astronaut to fly in space. He wasn't the first civilian ever in space. That was Soviet cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova, also the first woman in space. And he wasn't technically the first American civilian in space either. That was Joseph Walker, a test pilot who flew the X-15 to altitudes higher than 100 kilometers above sea level, which is high enough to be considered a suborbital space flight. But it still makes Neil Armstrong the first American civilian to achieve Earth orbit, which is pretty cool, right? I mean, if the whole first person to walk on the moon thing doesn't impress you. And how do you follow that, by the way? You fly to the moon, you land on the moon, you walk on the moon, you come back home, then what? I'll tell you what Neil Armstrong did. Number five, after Apollo, he became a teacher. Armstrong completed work on his master's degree in aerospace engineering in 1970 and left NASA in 1971. He accepted a position as a professor at the University of Cincinnati and taught there as a member of its Department of Aerospace Engineering for the next eight years. Armstrong reportedly chose to teach at the University of Cincinnati rather than his alma mater, Purdue University, because Cincinnati had a smaller aerospace department and he hoped the faculty there wouldn't resent him for having been hired as a professor despite only earning his master's the year before. That humility was a quality Armstrong would exhibit for the rest of his life. He was famously reluctant to sign autographs because he disliked seeing objects bearing his signature sold for thousands of dollars. He once discovered that his barber had sold some of his clipped hair to a collector for $3,000 and threatened a lawsuit unless the barber donated the money to charity. Despite his ambivalence toward his status as a celebrity in the early 1990s, he hosted a TV documentary series about the history of aviation, First Flights. It ran for three seasons, and it's currently available to watch on Amazon. I'd recommend checking it out if an aviation documentary hosted by the first person to walk on the moon sounds like your kind of thing. Neil Armstrong died on August 25th, 2012 due to complications from coronary bypass surgery. He was 82. His memorial service was attended by many of his fellow astronauts, including John Glenn and his Apollo 11 crewmates Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins. On September 14, 2012, his cremated remains were buried at sea in the Atlantic Ocean. Ten days later, the U.S. Navy announced that it would be naming a new ship after him. In March 2014, his wife Carol officially christened the ship the Neil Armstrong. It's currently operating off the east coast of the United States, conducting scientific research. The hardest part is picking only five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron of this channel. Thanks for watching.